Party. The Scottish National Party has caused a political earthquake, almost totally wiping out any opposition in Scotland. The party has been on the rise since last year's Scottish independence referendum. Uh, back then, the Conservative government's last-minute promises won over voters in Scotland who decided against breaking away from the UK. But a few of those promises have been delivered, pushing many Scots towards the Nationalists, and mainly at the expense of Labour. Let's discuss the results of the election with a Tom Gross, a British-born journalist and political commentator, joining us live here on RT International. Thanks so much for coming on today. What do you think of Cameron's luck? Was it luck in this case? Well, um, I guess there was an element of luck, but uh, perhaps he ran a better campaign than a lot of pundits have given him uh, credit for. I mean, he, it is definitely a resounding victory. On the other hand, expectations were so low that if you actually step back and look at the results, he's got a wafer-thin uh, majority, and it's not going to be that easy for him to govern in a stable way. Um, as your previous correspondent mentioned, there's a, he's got a right wing to his own party who share a lot of the views of UKIP and although UKIP, the United Kingdom Independence Party, only got one seat, they got around 13% of the vote. So there is a groundswell of public support for UKIP type positions and a lot of that public support is also contained within his party. So it, it is a victory for him, uh, partly maybe through luck, but um, there are big challenges ahead. Well, there certainly are big challenges ahead. Uh, one of them that of uh, Cameron promising a referendum, as you know, on EU membership. Do, do you think London's relationship with, with Europe could change? Well, um, a couple of years ago, I would have thought that uh, the British would not vote to leave the European Union, but I think it is a really distinct possibility now. There is a lot of antipathy towards the EU in Britain. Cameron, as you mentioned, is planning in 2017 to have a referendum, a simple question, in or out, and it's going to be a close, closely fought referendum. And uh, Britain doesn't hold referendums very often, but as we saw with the Scottish referendum last September, when the powers in London decided to hold that referendum, they were confident that the Scottish nationalists would not uh, succeed. In fact, it was a very, very close referendum, and even though the Scottish nationalists narrowly lost the referendum, it's not actually the end of the story, as we see, because we see this enormous victory for the Scottish nationalists at the general election yesterday. And in a way, they let the genie out of the bottle with Scottish nationalism. Perhaps by holding a referendum on the EU, they're also letting the genie out of the bottle with British nationalism among those people in British society that would rather go it alone and not be, belong to the European Union anymore. Let's, uh, let's talk about for a moment here, Tom, uh, how rhetoric can change. The Conservatives uh, certainly upped their anti-immigration rhetoric recently. Uh, do, do you think that made a difference? Do you think uh, did, did it help to convert uh, UKIP voters, perhaps? Um, Possibly. I'm, I'm actually speaking to you from uh, Tel Aviv, where I am this week, and uh, in the Israeli elections recently, there was also a surge to the right, to Netanyahu's Likud party, at the last moment, because he upped the rhetoric, Netanyahu, to appeal to more people on the right of his own party. So in Britain, Cameron also needed to go for the kind of UKIP supporters, so he made noises that might appeal to them, uh, anti-EU, um, slightly more patriotic, Patriotic. I wouldn't say anti-immigrant, that would be wrong, but, but uh, certainly he needed to appeal to that groundswell of UKIP support. Um, I wouldn't say there's necessarily an anti-immigrant feeling in Britain, but what there is, is, is because of the EU and because London in particular is an attractive city, there are just a, a huge number of migrants moving to Britain. So even those British people that are for migration think it should be controlled more. Britain is not the United States. It's not such a big country that it can just absorb millions and millions of people moving in. So even among the more tolerant liberal people, there is concern that there is just too much migration in Britain. But uh, the problem is, as long as they're members of the EU, it's very difficult to stop a large segment of that migration. And I believe that Britain, possibly Germany too, but I believe that Britain is the number one destination, both for EU migrants, but also for those African and other migrants that manage to take boats and land in Italy and Greece, they don't necessarily want to stay in Italy and Greece. Many of them want to go to Britain. Well, it certainly has been an issue underlying the run-up to this election. Uh, Tom Gross, a British-born journalist and political commentator, thank you very much for your time today.
Well, the